Well, um, this was unexpected. So, um, I might be uh, continuing something that I started about like a year or two ago. But part of my voice, I'm a bit sick right now, so my nose is my voice is going to sound a bit nasally. Dealing with the sinus congestion as I have for the longest time now. So, just a heads up. Um, but anyways, I'm going into this with practically no script. I have basic ideas down, but that's really it. So I'm going to have to be doing a lot of editing and cutting out and whatnot. Because I'm going to be going through a lot of brain farts, if you will. You know, I'll constantly be forgetting things or trailing off or whatever like I always do. Kind of like right now. But anyways... So, uh, time to get into the video. Alright, so the problem is, the reason why the video wasn't made a year or two ago, like I mentioned earlier, was mainly because, well, at least from what I remember, I probably dealt with some sort of issues with sounds. From what I remember, I think the sounds didn't work. So... I recorded for basically like 40 minutes, and my voice was cut out of the entire video. But that was an old phone. I just tested it, it works now, so we won't have this issue again. Alright, so first of all, you're probably wondering about my position on tweening. You probably wonder if I hate it, or if I like it, or whatever. Now... The thing is, I've sort of had an opinion on tween ever since I let go of it back in 2017. It's just that I generally don't like it. I'm not really too much of a fan of it, and I think most of the time it gets misused. I'm not saying that it's a god-awful horrendous thing. No, it's... It's it's no epitaph or anything. It, but what I can say is that I I definitely do feel like it's misused. Well, I guess my opinions are otherwise, so I'll just move on to how it works. So as you can see here, you know we we have the stick figure. The stick figures are help show us how twinning works. So. I mean, there's two different topics of tweening that I want to cover today. You know, there's like the actual animation tweening, like the FPS and whatnot. And then there's the tween frame button. Which, if we do it here, boom. The uh, tween frame button. I want to cover that too. Um, so here we have Stick Fair. It's on the way to us. He's gonna. He's going to wave to us. Yeah. Like that. Like that. Boom. Really, really janky, but it gets the job done. Um, so anyways, when we put on tween, of course, you'll notice a clear difference. It gives a little pop up talking about movement. It basically, Ralph already goes over how tween works, but I guess I'm just here to, you know, give my view on it, my opinions, my explanation, whatnot. So you know, you can you can always go reading through that if you want. Like Ralph, I mean, he's the entire developer of the app. You should definitely take his word over mine, but that's why today I'm going to be going over more opinionated things rather than, like, factual things. I mean, we are we all know that tween, it, it autofills things in for you, like that. Fills in all the frames automatically. Another thing you can notice is how the FPS is raised. That goes into some cons. That'll be mentioned later, if I can actually remember them. So a lot, a lot of people might say that 
well, the animation is a lot smoother, so it's a lot better. Well, actually, no. <laughs> That's just it. No. But I'll explain why. Okay, so, immediately something I wanted to do, which I did a while ago, a really good way to show how this works is literally by putting it in slow motion. Make the FPS one. One frame per second. And you can automatically see, especially right there at the wave. Now, if you were to record yourself waving in slow motion in real life, it wouldn't look anything like that. At all. In fact, it would look a lot more like... Let me, let me do something, let me put something together. Well, there might not be as much arm bending. That's something, a habit I've developed to have a cartoonish aspect in my animations. You know, as an animator, you tend to exaggerate a lot of things. Animations. I think that's actually one of the uh, basis of animation that Alan Becker talked about. But you notice that your arm... I know I'm not really caring too much about the upper arm movement. More just the forearm but, as you notice, it eases in and out. It has something called arcs, fluidity. It's a natural motion. Like that. You know, so there is the FPS. To make it smoother, naturally. Now, the natural motion is something more like that. Um, it's not what we saw earlier. What we saw earlier... Let me delete some frames. Yeah, we want to have larger spaces because we're going to put down the FEX. We're going to do that thing again that we did earlier. Put twenty one. Yeah, there we go. No, I know it's a little slow. Yeah, you know, I, I I can put it up to uh, two FPS, but you really get to notice the movement isn't natural. You'd also think, well, well, I don't know who you is. I guess it's just like, I'm imagining a lot of people who would be against what I'm saying. Let's say this imaginary you, whoever that is, somebody who's all like, oh, tweeting is the best, yada yada. They'd say, well, it may, maybe it's too fast for the eye to really notice a difference. Well, if that's true... How come some people can tell the difference between a tweened animation and a simply high FPS animation? At least I can. I don't know if that's a secret hidden ability of mine, but I can tell you I've always noticed a bit of a difference. And that's because even though it happens fast, the brain still recognizes the motion as unnatural. When it's a lower FPS, like, notice how robotic this looks. If it's a lower FPS, of course, we turn out tweeting. And we look at it like that. Everything looks like the arm wave at the end because it was if I deleted too many frames from it. Your brain just kind of automatically fills in the gaps. And this is what happens in industry animation. It's produced at 24 FPS on doubles, making it appear... 12 FPS, they don't use tweening. Well, at least they don't most of the time. Yeah, you see things flow so naturally. You don't see all that weird tweening stuff used in professional animation because it's not needed to make something look smooth and natural. Your brain fills in the gaps. Another problem I wanted to talk about with tweening is... Well, I mean, now we're practically on the issues, the consequences of tweening. Um, 
something that I remember from a while ago that I saw online is that here, uh, let's grab some random figures, uh, um, I don't know, sure, Jose, why not? We're gonna have Jose over here, um, he's just vibing, I guess, I don't know, do whatever you want. Um, we're gonna have, uh, Sure, Garo. Garo is gonna come out of nowhere, and Garo's gonna beat him up. I guess I don't know. Oh, man, it's so annoying. But okay, so we have them. Garo, he he comes out of nowhere. Okay, right, and he is going to punch. <laughs> oh my God, he's gonna he's gonna slam. Chosen in the in the head or something. I don't know. He has he has his arm out. Okay. So he's so gonna pump him on the head and. Well, okay. Let's let's go through with it. We 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 want to have a reaction frame, right? You know, you, you want chosen his body to react to it. He gets all scrunched up or something. I don't know. I don't know, whatever, whatever you do. You make, you make Garo attack him, right? Well, problem is with tweening. And also, too, I played around with tweening personally earlier. Just to see what it was like again, I guess. And to test it out and see the limitations with it. And this is another thing I learned. So, um, yeah, we put the FPS down so we can see it in some emotion again. Tweening on. Notice how, here, I'll put it even slower. Notice how Chose, since he's on the same layer as Garo, there's no layers and stick notes, so they all have to move the same. Notice how he already starts reacting to the punch before it even connects. That's another issue with tween because tween autofills everything in, so things that react late they, t they tend to have that issue where they react late. And I don't know a solution to this. Of course, the only one that I can really think of is do not tween this friend, but that can lead to an issue too. Because the thing is, when you use tween, as Ralph explains it in the tween message, the software has to speed up the FPS in order to, well, make it look smoother. That's what tween does, right? You know how it looks smooth, because it's technically a higher FPS. All the other frames are just added for you. So, with that said, that can lead to some issues if you have a bunch of frames that you don't want to tween. We have, okay, we have them moving around. Whatever they, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna punch or something. Who knows? And they, boom, and they punch, they punch or something, I don't know. Yeah, or, or yeah, boom. Or shake hands, or whatever, whatever you want to interpret it as. And then they they fly away. Now the thing is, you can do a tween and everything with it, but if you don't want to tween every friend, like if there's a bunch of stuff that happens that you don't want to tween because it'll make it look ugly, if you turn off tweening for a bunch of stuff in a row. The FPS will still remain the same. Notice how it's only 3 FPS, yet it moves that fast. That's another issue I encountered when personally using Tween. It tends to do that, and it can lead to a lot of inconsistency, especially if the rest of it is normal speed, which I'll show right now. Let's go from here. 
make the rest of the tweens. And so we want to be consistent because these frames will move at the normal FPS that the tween is going at, and the rest will move normally. So that you, you see the problem? That can immediately be an issue for some people like me who, like I said earlier, played around with tween and saw what we could do with it. Of course, I can't show the animation because it's private. I have a channel where I post a lot of random tweens, sometimes untweened animations. They're more like doodle animations. And it's hidden on YouTube. I don't think anyone can really find it. Somebody almost did. But I post a bunch of random doodle animations there just for fun, just to let loose and kind of like, like a like an artist and just letting out some loose scribbles, you know? I'm also practicing f some things of my comfort zone, like hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat and whatnot, that, you know, I'd be too embarrassed to show anybody else. So anyways, and that's not important, I'm trailing off again. You get the point. Now, there, there could be a lot of things that I could potentially cover, but like I said, I don't even have a script. I only memorize basic concepts to go over and Really, I, I don't have that much of a mental capacity, so I guess I'll have to move on, <laughs> I guess. I, I mean, I've covered the major points, from what I remember. I mean, if I miss anything large, like if I miss a lot of large stuff, then I'll make a second video, and I'll cover things in that video. I'll make like a part two. Okay, so now before I move on to the benefits of tweening, I would like to go over something I mentioned earlier, which was tween framing. Now, I think there was just one thing I wanted to go over this for now. It's just a visual demonstration and how people misuse it. Like, for example, people might use it to help them animate a run or whatever. Really lazy example. I swear I'm better than this. Yeah, you have a the stick figure breaks into a full on run, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. So um we're gonna tween frames. And you can already realize that uh, the animation looks kind of wonky. Not in the sense that it's bad animating on my part, which, yes, it is, because it's some quick example. But also the fact that it looks extremely robotic. I know people might use it to animate, say, a punch. I make two poses, because people make two frames. And they make some punch like this, quote unquote punch. Oh, if you're lucky, they make three frames. Oh, yeah, you know, bad footing. Yeah, bad footing. The foot's all, it just slides over there. For, for whatever fucking reason. Yeah, so you have you have stuff here, okay? Let's tween from the shit out of it. Now people add more tween frames than they even need to. They'll add like a bunch like that. Maybe make it a higher FPS to be fair. I mean, you can already tell the issue being the robotic movement. This is like normal tweening, as I mentioned earlier, except it's just more manual <laughs> than tweening, even though it's already automatic as it could be, but you can tell it's automatic, it's mechanical. People just choose where to place some tweening, and that's really the only difference. 
and also doesn't wear his VFEA, so it's fair. You're not in tween frames to the, uh, the recoil, whatever people call it. I forgot the term for it. You might have shit like this. It's like, well, what is this, you know? Yeah, tween frame, when you use them properly, can really... It can really make the animation look extremely mechanic, weak, unnatural, robotic, anything like that. Which is actually why using something like this... Oh wait, no, I should talk about the benefits. Okay. Alright, now, um, I think I've gotten over practically everything else. So I think it's safe to get to the benefits. Now while you're here, did you actually watch the whole video? Chances are, if you're one of those people who love tween like it's some sort of religious figure or something, you will immediately skip here to hear the benefits or to use in arguments against people. And I really do recommend watching the video because chances are, I went over a lot of the issues that you might be overlooking, yada yada, let's continue. So immediately right off of that, I want to say tween really isn't bad for very, very new beginners. People who are literally just learning how to move the figure around, how to pose the figure, and make animations go from one frame to the other. Also, with things like, you know, choreography, staging, whatever, learning how to do basically anything in an animation, then, yeah, they can tween as a placeholder to make it look presentable, to, like, help people understand what's going on. That can definitely help. Like, using tween frames, a right amount, a proper amount of tween frames, not, like, having, like, ten frames for a punch, because that's way too slow, but having a proper amount of tween frames to understand sort of path that maybe a punch goes, or maybe a kick or whatever, but that would move on to another benefit for tween framing. And that's using tween framing as a tool rather than a crutch. Using it to help you rather than to do everything for you. There's a difference. I have, I mean, you know, fine, I'll go from this pose. It goes to... It goes to a kick, I, I don't know. That's a really terrible pose, I think. Pretty sure. So I wanna I wanna animate a kick or something. I, I don't I don't know. There'll be a lot more st like stretching involved, just foreshortening. But say I wanna Oh, I want to animate a kick. Same thing, I know the brief poses. You know, maybe you look at like a pose reference sheet or something. But you don't know how to fill in the in-betweens. So where we have our basic poses. That's funny if he has a gun. Now, what if I use tween framing as a tool to help me understand kind of basically where the figure will go there i can kind of understand that it might be around that spot but of course because i use 50 percent it doesn't include easing because the ai when tweeting it doesn't understand easing your arcs which are important things in making anything realism or cartoonism look believable make it look natural make it look generally satisfying so i might move it forward a bit or actually no move it backwards because they're winding up into the kick we're easing into it change the footing to match and kind of just kind of use them as like a template or a base plate or whatever for the movement of the character to kind of like help me without having to move everything around myself just like I said, a co like a tool, like a guide. It can work like that.
boom. I just edited the tween frame to make it more natural because I used it as a tool to help me that I would go off of and fix rather than a completely automated process to rely on to just quickly do something for me. Of course, I will do another one for there, but I mean, I already showed an example. You, you get the point, right? I explained everything. Another thing I want to talk about, another benefit, is when you use tween framing with really small spacing. Like, for example, slow motion. Because at that point, it can help with um, extending the duration. Like, if you move the, the character really slow, you have small spacing. Like, natural movement, right? Like, you're naturally moving them. I mean, hell, probably even smaller than this. This is like a quick example. Yeah, that's small enough, whatever. And then you can tween frame it. Now, it, it, it helps because there's not that much movement going on anyways. So the AI, the software, doesn't have to worry about filling in arcs and easing and stuff because there are practically none between each frame because the spacing is so small. It can help with that. As long as you do your own keyframes, and now let's even turn off the uh, turn up the FPS. We want to make some slow motion. You can even use doubles. Just double frame everything. Make it even slower. That's something I do sometimes, especially in speed battles. Doesn't really make much of a difference. Definitely not noticeable, and it can help. Yeah, there's probably some other benefits that I can think of, but. I don't know. Like I said, practically no mental capacity. I can't really think of these things on the spot too well. So, that'll probably be the end of the video. I mean, now this is probably going on long enough. There might have been some things that I covered in the original video two years ago that I didn't cover now. Which would suck, but like I said, if I missed a lot of significant things, then I'll make a second video. I can do that. Um, I would like to, because I want to cover up things that I miss. Like, for example, I mean, I might even remember something really important after I finish recording and finish editing, and then I upload it to YouTube, and I'm like, oh crap, I could have said this, or I could have said that. I could have done this, or I could have done that. And, yeah, you might send me comments like, oh, I should have mentioned this or that or whatever, because I usually remember things too late. Let's be real. But, yeah, that should be it. We're probably around 40 minutes right now, maybe a bit over. But, um, yeah. I might do more videos like this if it gets well-received. Videos just talking about general things, tutorials, whatnot, kind of like my uh, sound tutorial. Everybody really liked the sound tutorial. It's one of it's my second most viewed video and one of my fastest growing ones. I mean, no, it it is my fastest growing one. It's the most consistent video I had or I have. It's been climbing up there for ages and uh, it's slowing down a bit, but still, you know, people liked it and I'm glad people enjoy it I'm glad I'm helping people out and I want to help people out with things like this like giving my own insight on things hopefully try to help people out with understanding deciding what to do but other than that I don't really know what else what else to say I don't really know what else to say so um, yeah I'll have to end it there <laughs>